Now, on Fridays at this time on Radio National Breakfast, we're usually joined by Dr Chris Smith to talk science, but Chris is away studying for his virology exams, as you do. So stepping into the breach is a young science show reporter, Sarah Castor-Perry. Sarah's a Cambridge graduate, and she is spending some time with Robin Williams and the Radio National Science Unit. She also works with Chris and the other naked scientists in Britain. So it's a great pleasure to welcome Sarah. Good morning, Sarah. Morning. Now, this week was a great week, as we know, for Australian science. And I think for once we really have heard a lot about Australian scientists doing well with our first female Nobel Prize winner, the biologist Elizabeth Blackburn, winning the Nobel Prize for medicine. But there were some other awards dished out too called the Ig Nobles. Tell us about the Ig Nobles. Yes, well, the Ig Nobels are awarded every year uh, around the same time as the real Nobels. Um, and they're awarded by a sort of science humour magazine called the Annals of Improbable Research. And what they do is they, they give these awards out in 10 categories, mm. like you said, that make you laugh and then make you think. And what they do is they get real Nobel laureates to present the prizes. So previous Nobel winners come and they give the prizes to these people. It's genuine research, though. Oh, it's genuine research, yes. But it's the sort of research that makes you think, OK, someone spent time and money researching that. <laughs> yeah, OK. But then quite a lot of the things are actually quite impressive, really. So. Well, let's go to some of them. And I note that the public health prize seemed to grab the media's attention. So basically a case of <laughs> breast to the rescue. Yes. Uh, well, this one went so to So glad you brought this up. To, yeah, well, uh, to a group from uh, Chicago, Illinois, in the USA, uh, for inventing a bra that can be turned into a pair of face masks or gas masks. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you're walking down the street and uh, there's a sudden gas attack or a dust storm like there was in Sydney a couple of weeks ago. Uh, or, I don't know, a sudden attack of swine flu or something. Mm. And um, so you see this thing coming and you're obviously you'd need to be a woman to do this. Um, and you, you think, oh, OK, right, I've got to do something with this. So you whip off your bra mm. and then it separates into two face masks for you and a companion or a lucky passerby. <laughs> it's sort of a bloke's dream, I suppose. Well, I think it is the bloke's ideal prize, really. I told one of my friends about it. I said, oh, yeah, you know, because the girl takes her bra off and then some lucky man gets half of her bra. And he said, yeah, and you get to see breasts. <laughs> so I was like, OK, yep. That's that's kind of, I think the men must have voted for that prize. Well, indeed, uh, there were some fairly amusing pictures, weren't there, from the prize-giving event where all those real Nobel laureates have had bras over their faces. It's so <laughs> funny. You know, these Stupid. really eminent scientists are there and they've got, you know, bright pink lacy bras <laughs> over their faces. It's great. Just fantastic. And the Peace Prize went to the science of being hit by a beer bottle. Now, the critical point here being, was it better to be hit by a full bottle or an empty bottle? I would have thought surely an empty bottle. Well, th this was done by a group of um, forensic pathologists in Switzerland. And uh, when you see people who have been unfortunate victims of blunt force trauma a lot, which obviously they do, uh, they obviously got around to thinking, hmm, I wonder which is worse, being hit with a full bottle or an empty bottle. So what they did was they went away and they did some experiments and they discovered that it took more energy to break the empty bottle. So actually, that's worse, but an empty and a full bottle are equally bad to be hit over the head with because they've both got more than enough striking force to break your skull before your skull breaks the bottle. So pretty bad either way really and they they concluded their paper with saying that this was evidence to uh support the idea of banning glass bottles in any situations which involve the risk of human conflict so uh any friday night in a city center i think really. yes that's it yeah. any pub which of course it, it, you know young men in pubs is the greatest level of violence in this in this country it should exactly. have far more attention than it does now one more that you might like to um pique our attention with well <laughs> there was one which i thought was quite sweet which was from the uk which was that uh these, these researchers in the UK discovered that cows with names give more milk than cows without names. Is so, this... you know, you call your cow Daisy and she gives you more milk. I think that's quite sweet, really. It's true, too. Oh, isn't it's it? completely true. What it is, it's the human-animal relationship. And when cows are stressed out by human contact, they give less milk. So I, it's kind of a, not necessarily a causality, but a sort of a correlation between 
farmers who give their cows names and know them individually might just have a better relationship with the cows and therefore the cows are less stressed out and they give more milk. I love it. Now, on the science show this week, the real Nobels, I suppose. Yes, we're covering the real Nobels, the the medicine prize, obviously, uh, with Elizabeth Blackburn, and uh, the physics prize and the chemistry prize as well. So that's a science show reporter and visiting naked scientist Sarah Castor-Perry, whose relatives in England are looking at her right now as we speak. They're streaming you live and she's being videoed as well. So, Sarah, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Sarah Castor-Perry from the science show and from England. It's uh, 19 minutes to seven here in Radio National Breakfast.